This is the second video of uh, about Draw FPP, which is the diagramming tool for classical FPP uh, flow-based programming. Um, we're going to talk about running this network uh, under Eclipse, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, how to add some monitoring uh, to a diagram and running that. Pretty straightforward. Um, first thing we have to do, this is, sorry, this is the way we left the diagram at the end of the last video. So the first thing we have to do is add um, classes, um, most of which can be obtained from the Java FPP JARA file. And I'll talk about uh, how you get the latest version of that shortly. For now, let's uh, fill in the classes. So I'm going to right click on that. And this is probably just off the picture. So it says here, choose component slash subnet class. So you click on that. And there will be two areas. One is the um, directory in which you're actually developing your project, which in my case is test draw and bin further because we're trying to pick up the classes. Or you can go um, and get them from the Java FPP jar file. So in this case, uh, we're going to go into this one. Uh, that was a double click, by the way, com. And it's in examples, components. So decompose class, there we go. And everything's connected. And at some point I should update the class and function information to be a little more accurate, but that's not important for running the, the uh, network. That's filled in. Generate word counts is uh, is specific to this application. Um, so it's in my working project. Choose components of net class. Go up here into components and generate word counts. I think I said in the previous video what it does is it receives all the uh, all the words and they go into a hash map um, and become the key for the hash map and the value is actually the number of occurrences of that word. When all of the data has been received, generate word count outputs um, a set of pairs of word and count pairs. However, the sequence is not guaranteed, so we need to do a sort to make them um, useful for human beings. You'll find in FBP that um, uh, a lot of these things like sort um, and, and sequencing type functions are not really required by the computer but are, make things more convenient for humans. Sort is a standard yeah, so we'll, again we'll get that from the jar file. It was recently updated to handle up to a million items, components. It's still a very simple-minded sort. And go down a bit, sort. Um, that's function and output port is better. And display. For display, we're going to use um, choose components of that class we're going to use write to console. And so we'll have to go down to the bottom then, write to console, there we go. Now you'll notice that um, the output port is optional and it's not connected. So under this column, the entry is optional. If it had been not optional, mandatory, if the port had been mandatory and it's not connected, you see the word missing. And of course, if it's connected, you'd see yes. Um, so that's, we will also use this same component further on in this video for the monitoring thing where we connect both the input and the output. So that's it. Um, 
we're really ready to generate some code. I'm just turning that to blue to look pretty. There we go. So we go up into File, Generate Java Network. Uh, this is one of several languages that we can support. We can generate it for Java or for C Sharp. And JSON is sort of open ended right now. But it's set to Java right now, so we'll generate Java network. And um, you'll notice that uh, uh, you can change the package if you like, but we'll leave that uh, set to that for now. So um, if we do a save as, store that in word count. Um, which already had something in there. Overwrite. Now I'm going to run the program we've just generated. And uh, uh, before you do that, um, you'll see that there's a red mark on the right here, which is due to that package of X's. So, but luckily it, um, Eclipse tells you what to change it to. So you change the package declaration as they recommend. And now there's no errors. So now we go up to word count, uh, debug as or run as, debug as maybe, and Java application. There, it's run. So now let's expand it. And you can see that um, we've generated all our words. Uh, I'll just direct your attention to the uh, two lines at the bottom run complete, the elapsed time 0.39 seconds, and these are counts of various API calls in uh, FPP. This is create, create IP, number of drops, dropped IPs, sends, and this is receives that do not result in a null, in other words, end of stream. Um, this one is a recently added function which stands for drop oldest, which is um, a function where um, you could specify on a connection that sends should not be suspended. If the send um, cannot find space in the connection, it just simply uh, exits. Uh, this is sort of more for use with a stream of measurements where you don't really care if you drop a few measurements. What you don't want to do is have the uh, the um, connection fill up and then suspend the uh, sending process. I've mentioned the uh, Java FPP jar file a number of times. Um, here's how you can obtain the most recent one. Go up into GitHub. Uh, JPolm is my collection of repositories. Click on Java FPP, go into Releases, and the last set of releases are, are stored in reverse chronological sequence. So you get the last one and go down a little bit and click on Java FPP jar file, the latest one. Um, this needs to go into, for Eclipse, this needs to go into your Java build path and draw FBP will need it if you want to get components from there, in which case you use draw FBP service to locate the jar file and uh, tell it where you've stored it. In my view, this is one of the classic cartoons about programming. I'll let you think about that for a little bit. Now I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, how you might add some monitoring to a network to see what's traveling across one or more of the connections. In a comment on the previous draw FPP video, somebody said, what happens if you want to see what's going along one of these uh, connections? Well, we didn't add any specific functions into draw FPP to monitor traffic on the connection as it's so easy to add a display function in between two processes. And also, 
uh, I think I said before that um, the uh, different types of IPs going across the connections would make it very difficult to provide a general purpose function. So we'll demonstrate how you can just add a process in between two other processes. So if we want to see what the output of decompose is, um, let's just uh, add, we'll just delete this line first. And we'll add a process to display, which we call display words. And we'll just add that in between these two. So we connect this. There we go. Now, normally for inputs, we come into the left hand side or the top. But in this case, for aesthetic reasons, I'm just going to go in at the bottom. So it's going to ask me, you sure that's OK? And that's the yes. And out and in have been filled in. And we need to associate this with a, uh, a actual uh, component, as before, choose component. So we'll go into the jar file and find a component, which will be called write to console. And everything's connected, and it's yes, and yes. So that's good. Now, basically, all you do is generate a network. Um, so I generate Java network. And you'll see display words has been filled in, connected, in between decompose and generate word counts. So that's handled. And that, if we just save that, we'll save it in the same place, word count, which is in uh, my test draw project. So that goes here. Overwrite existing, yes. And that's done. So we really don't need this anymore. We can uh, delete that. Now we have word count, the new modified word count, sitting in our test draw project. Um, it may be necessary to do a refresh on word count. Here, refresh. Um, but anyway, um, the new monitoring is in place, display words. So as before, we just go up and either run it or debug it, um, whichever you feel like. There it is. Now if I uh, expand that, you'll see we've got the, the same word count and stuff as before. But preceding that is, uh, is all the words in sequence as they were decomposed. I just wanted to make a point about these two write to console processes. Um, they are writing to the same console but they're prevented from running concurrently by the sort, which does not put out any of its output until it's after it's received all of its input. So in practice, these two outputs cannot overlap. Um, sometimes you uh, concurrently running processes do generate overlapped output, but um, in this particular case, it's not a problem. Thanks for watching.